Welcome back to another episode of HVAC System Design Tutorial. Uh, this is the channel of the World of Building Design. In this channel, uh, we review the HVAC system design uh, techniques and also the process that HVAC system designer use the building environment. Uh, in this specific tutorial, we would like to talk about the carrier hab system tab and, and what type of equipment are in the system tab and when you start your design with this software, uh, what are the different type of systems that you need to be aware of and we're going to go much more into the detail in the future tutorial but this, uh, this video would be a high level review of what are the different type of equipments exist uh, you know, in the carrier hab and you can select from uh, for the purpose of your load calculation and for for understanding of your space conditioning. Uh, I will show you, um, you know, the type of systems when we go into the uh, carrier hab environment. If you haven't subscribed for this channel of the World of Building Design, I recommend you to go ahead and subscribe by pressing the notification button. You will see the new tutorial once they are posted. We would like to give you the knowledge set that you would need to become a confident HVAC system designer in the industry. And, and it's a very good uh, tool for you as a new you know, mechanical graduate or somebody who wants to get into this industry. Uh, you, know, uh, you can take advantage of the free videos in our channel. Thank you very much. In this tutorial, I would like to talk with you about the systems in the carrier hab software. So once we have defined all of the information in our spaces uh, that we discussed in the previous tutorials, then we want to talk about the systems so systems is where you have to define the type of uh, equipment that is going to provide heating and cooling for your entire space. It can be the entire space or it can be a zone that you're uh, assigning to that system. Because the system topic is a very broad and, and very important topic, uh, it's not going to be a one single uh, tutorial. I just wanted to provide an introduction to this topic in this session, in this video, and we will expand on that um, as we move along. So if you come to the left-hand side uh, browser, where you can see the system, uh, in the system, in the, in the example that I had, that unit, that uh, facility had a rooftop unit. It was a single zone rooftop unit serving the entire uh, space all the offices and all occupancy areas but in general when you want to define a new system you have to come here and press on the new default system you double click on that uh, and you come up with a new um, you know with a new box where you have to start defining your system so basically this is set based on an air distribution system in this menu or in this box or in here, you can't determine any boiler or any hydronic system. This is only for the air distribution system that you define for your zone or for multiple zones. So basically, you have to determine the name of the air system that you would like to select. For example, you, you want to put RTU-2 or anything else. You can change air handling unit 1. Anything that you want to name for the purpose of your reporting and your review, you can determine that. And then when you come to the equipment type, there is a quite a number of type of equipment you can select. You have the option for the package rooftop unit or package vertical uh, units, or you have option for split air handling unit, chill water air handling unit, or terminal units. As you can see, all of the systems are air distribution units. For the case of terminal units, they are local, uh, you know, air circulation units. But for the for the purpose of rooftop or air handling unit, they are main air distribution system that are serving either one or multiple multiple zones. So. Um, when you you can keep it as undefined and if you keep it as undefined the option of the air system type that you would have is this four option 
So you have either constant air volume for a single zone, or you have a constant air volume with terminal reheat. And then you have variable air volume, and you have variable volume and variable temperature system. So every of these types are some sort of systems that you, as the HVAC system designer, need to know about this type of system, how they operate, and how they are providing heating, cooling, uh, humidification, or dehumidification to your space. So in the other tutorial, we're going to get more into the detail, or we dive into to these different systems in in uh, you know in more detail to understand how every of these systems are beneficial to a space and how they are going to operate because uh, either of this selection that you make in the other tabs that you can see on the top for the system component, zone component and sizing data, you will encounter a slightly different type of requirement or calculation that is dependent on the selection you make in this very same, the very first uh, general tab. So. If you don't go with the undefined and you want to directly select any of this equipment, either package rooftop unit or package vertical unit, um, by selecting any of this, uh, you, as I said, you will specify the type of units and then you have to determine other parameters uh, as we move along. Uh, the only difference in this tab in the equipment type is if you, for example, select the terminal unit, the other requirement here is added because it needs to understand how many zone that fan coil unit or terminal unit is serving. Is it uh, serving only one zone or is it serving multiple zone? Because as you know, each of these terminal units are uh, interlocked with one thermostat. If you serve multiple zone, it means that one thermostat serving multiple zones or regulate the temperature in multiple zones. So it is important to know uh, you know, how many zones you're putting on that specific terminal unit for which we are doing this calculation. And as you know, uh, the more calculation for individual zone you do in the, in the carrier hab, the more accurate load, uh, you know, estimation or calculation you would get out of the software for your, uh, for your uh, sizing, equipment sizing purpose. Okay, so I... I'm not going to go into detail in any of this equipment in this tutorial. I just wanted to show you how how many options we have in here. And uh, other thing I wanted to show for this terminal unit, for example, the terminal unit, when you select that, then you see that in the air system type, you have multiple options as a terminal unit. It can be package DX fan coil. Um, it can be two-pipe fan coil, four-pipe fan coil, uh, or, or other type of equipment that are categorized as the fan coil unit. Uh, I'm not going to go to other uh, tabs. And for the fan coil terminal units, you know that because it can take fresh air uh, for, for the occupancy ventilation requirement that we discussed in the previous tutorial, because of the space and number of occupants, you would need to provide a minimum fresh air to your space as per various standards and, and uh, local codes. Um, but the type of system can be either direct ventilation or dedicated outdoor air system ventilation. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you, uh, first of all, the type of equipment that we have here. Zoom in a little bit. So as, as I said to you, there are multiple types of equipment that you see here for the undefined. These are the options. You have package rooftop unit with multiple options. Uh, these are the selection you select from carrier half. And just for the example, I want to show you if you go with the terminal unit, uh, which is in the category of terminal units, these are basically the, the drop-down menu that you could select from the, from the carrier half software. Um, these are high level schematic of a terminal unit with two different fresh air configuration. As you remember from, uh, from the uh, carrier hab selection options, we said that if you go with the terminal unit, you can, for the ventilation, you can have direct ventilation and, or you can have dedicated outdoor air system ventilation for the terminal unit. 
What it means is that if you go with the direct ventilation air system, it means that you have opening on the wall or opening through the ductwork where you have directly untreated outdoor air coming to your fan coil unit and is mixed with your inside zone or inside space. And then you treat that with the fan coil unit, either with, for the heating or for the cooling purpose. So the idea is in the direct ventilation is that you don't treat the fresh air before you bring it into the fan coil unit. So in that case, you can uh, have the fan coil unit size to overcome the ventilation load of the outdoor air based on the volume of the outdoor air coming in. And uh, basically you take care of the ventilation load plus the space load because the space load is a result of uh, building envelope heat transfer and also the occupant who are uh, you know, emitting heat or the lighting system who are emitting heat, etc. So in that scenario, you don't have any equipment providing fresh air, but rather the fan coil unit or terminal units take the fresh air directly, treat it, mix it with the indoor air and retreat, and then provide to the space based on the design condition for the temperature and the humidity. But in the case of dedicated outdoor air system, uh, you would have a central air handling unit, which is totally 100% fresh air, and you centrally treat that fresh air for the heating and cooling design requirement, and then you feed them into the fan coil unit. So the treated air or conditioned air, whether for the heating or cooling purpose, is mixed with the return air from the space and then uh, supplied back to the space. So in this scenario, you might not need to take care of the fresh air ventilation load that coming into the unit because it's already been taken care of by the main central heating or cooling coil of that dedicated uh, fresh air uh, supply unit. They, they also call it DOAV, which is dedicated outdoor air unit. Um, so in that case, uh, to maintain your space or zone temperature, CO2 level or, or your humidity level, you just need to take care of the uh, space load for the heating and cooling requirement. The fresh air ventilation uh, has to be separately calculated for the total ventilation load because it's, as I said, taken off by the heating and cooling load upstream of your main dedicated outdoor air unit. And as you exhaust the air from the space, you can retreat it back and do the heat recovery and then exhaust it out so that you do also save energy in the heat recovery uh, of the, the, the air that comes out of the uh, space as part of that dedicated outdoor air. Uh, so these are the two different type of fresh air uh, ventilation requirement for terminal units. So I just wanted to bring it up that uh, all of the other system that you see here, they have their own, they have their own schematic arrangement, as you can see in the below, which we will discuss in the future tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.